Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, one particularly crafty carnivorous plant surprised our tribe when they realized that it would stop us from using all of our ports over to the next island. So Sienna and Tanunu had to put their heads together and come up with a way to take care of this thing. And while they did succeed, their struggles definitely didn't go unnoticed. Now Sienna is going to have to find one of her many, many healing fruits, so she doesn't end up passing away before her time. The hope is that this plant is going to grow back in the green. That way we'll have plenty of fruits to take with us to the next island too. But if it does end up growing back in a bit of a more hostile manner, then at least this time Cadence's side of the family can get involved. Cadence with her baryena claw, her ram horns, I think she would be a little bit better at taking care of these things. Kind of like her ancestors. I believe it was Rila, Princess Rila, who used the carnivorous plants as a bit of training. She had the Baryena Claw too, so I suppose that has been instilled in her. But let's go back to our water-bodied babies, because I don't want them getting too far away. And they're also going to be some of the most important creatures on this island because they're going to gather quite a bit of our food. Rose Quartz is still in mourning right now. Her brother ended up passing away. Mingo got a little bit too eager collecting food for the tribe, and he passed away during his mission. So I think she's going to take it upon herself to continue what he started. And we'll see if maybe we can sniff out any roots for her to dig up because I think they'd be worth a little bit more than just the fruits. Well, she does have one way up there, but she can't really get to it in this turn. Do you think we should maybe just grab these then for now? I suppose we should. Like, I'm expecting the next few days to be really hard, but I think we can do it. I think we can get by with minimal starvation damage, if any at all. Now we'll have to have Shark start clearing out the pathway for his son Jasper as well because we want him to get out into the next clearing as soon as possible. It looks like this is as far as he can get. Unfortunately, the jungles are just not at all kind to our water bodies, and that's because they don't have those cool ocean waves to retreat to. The abyss is a definitely a curse to our creatures with the water body. So I think that Jasper will eventually stumble out into the clearing with Roduke and with Peach, but it's going to take one extra turn. And I suppose that's good because Peach is still in mourning right now, too. Unfortunately, she lost her very first patient. Needle just couldn't make it through the night. So I suppose Rodu could help her by burying Needle's body. We'll have him scoot up here, though, because I am a little bit nervous about this carnivorous plant. That one should be growing back on the next turn, and we don't want our creatures getting munched on. So Peach can go ahead and gather up all of the stinky fruits that she can possibly carry while she marks out this grave for her patient Needle. Then they'll have to try their best to catch up to Foxtrot, who has already darted off into the swamplands. Though with her stinky tail, she's going to be very helpful, because that means she should be able to keep those pesky bugs at bay. So let's see, is this carnivorous plant safe? Okay, thank goodness. That's one less thing that Jasper has to worry about. So as we send him out into the clearing, stumbling through the mud, oh my gosh, he's gasping and wheezing as he stumbles out from the darkness. Wait, don't forget about me, guys. I want to come too. Is there room for one more? I think that Roduke would very gladly help guide this child with them. He's probably a little bit more worried about Peach than he's letting on as well. I've always considered that he is a very stoic individual, but he remembers Peach being so bright and happy and bubbly. He can't believe that this one little setback has changed her personality so much. So with all of those fruits now tucked away, I suppose we could start leading her through the swamplands. Yeah, I'm not really sure if she's going to be able to trust herself in taking care of Foxtrot, I think that's something that she'll have a very hard time deciding. She just doesn't feel like she's fit to take care of anything right now. 
but we'll bring her up here into the swamplands and cross our fingers that that big stinky tail will be enough to deter those bugs that we saw before. I did notice that our Dodomingo friend is still alive and well back here. Oh, and Cadence has plenty of roots to dig up. Well, since she is going to be lying in wait anyways, making sure that the pesky carnivorous plant is not going to grow back in a hostile way, We'll have her stay here in the weeds and just dig up the roots for our tribe, too. There we go, a little bit of extra food for you guys to munch on. And likewise, I think that Isana is going to stay over here. Maybe since she knows that her brother is going to go with Sienna to the healing fruit, she'll volunteer to watch the carnivorous plant. That way, once it grows back, she can let our tribe know if they need to stay away or if they can harvest from it safely. Now, Tanunu, come on and scoot over here. You've got to find a safe way for Sienna to go. And maybe it is that Dodomingo pecking about that would lure them in that direction. As long as we can carve our way through these thick weeds, then a nest wouldn't be such a bad thing for them to stumble into. I do believe that they are quite interested in starting a family together, especially as this brand new chapter in their journey is just about to take place. So if we can possibly scoot the Totominko off of that nest in the future, we might actually return to use it very soon. Let's bring Tanunu over here so we can clear out those weeds. And that should allow for Sienna to start scooting around the tree. Fortunately, this jungle is not an easy place to navigate through. But I think on the next turn, she should be able to make it over to the healing fruits. She still has three days left, so plenty of time for us to heal her. And then Wolf Song, you're probably still waiting for your friend, aren't you? Well, she can gather up all of those berries to impress Isana. That way they'll have some good food to take with them along their journeys. I feel like Wolf Song probably enjoys just running through the jungles with her friend, a little bit more than the idea of a brand new adventure on a new island. So maybe she'll decide to stay too? I'm sure that Foxtrot wouldn't mind having an adventure of her own. She seems like she would be much more happy in the Swamplands anyway. And since the next island is a swamp, maybe it means it was meant for her. Now Shark, you should be able to stumble up to the stinky fruits over here. That way you'll get one last chance to say goodbye to your son. You can help guide Rose Quartz out into the open after she digs up that last root. And Roduke... You better follow after Peach. We don't want him to get too far away from Jasper, just because I do want him to guide him with them. It's just so tricky with so many of our creatures being very, very tired and very, very slow. So, has the carnivorous plant turned into its little sapling form? I think it probably has. Maybe we should have Isana jump in here pick up those weeds, and then jump back to her stinky fruits. Just getting a little bit nervous that we might not know when this thing has grown back if we're not careful. She's really taking her job seriously. She wants to make sure that nothing is going to surprise her brother again. No harm can come to the bluebird feathers after all. I think this might be the closest that Cadence has ever gotten to the other half of her family as well. You know, I'm really starting to think that she would be a bit jealous of them. It's almost as if Adam has given our flighty little birds his blessing. He does have the poison fangs after all, which would connect him to Adam like nothing else could. So maybe right now she's wondering why Adam has favored this side of the family, rather than hers, who's tried so desperately to uphold his ways. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe they need to make more of a splash. This is something she'll ponder as she clears up the pathway for the rest of her family, scoots back into the jungle to make sure that everybody can get through. Because if nothing else, she is not one to leave behind the members of her family. She'll make sure that Foxtrot can scoot all the way up to the boards. Alright, I guess she's going to have no trouble whatsoever, now that that pathway is nice and clear. So would it actually be easier for Sienna to scoot on this way? She can settle right down next to the healing fruit, so she should be able to scoop it up on the next turn. And it gives a wolf song a little bit of extra time to poke away at that berry bush. Now I think what I want to do, 
before we move to Nunu anywhere else is just make sure that we set up one baby between them. There's always the possibility that an ape could come charging out of the jungle and mess up our plans, so we want to be safe rather than sorry. I will go ahead and place the nimble fingers into her first slot, and then of course those all-important stripes, because we need to see that on their babies too. And as for Tununu, I wonder if we should go for the stinky tail. I would imagine that the stinky tail is a little bit more dominant than the scorpion tail or the peacock tail even, but I guess we're going to find out. So go ahead and breed with Sienna. And then you have one more turn to scoot on back to the nest. That way you can keep an eye on this thing for the next turn, and hopefully swoop in before the Dota Mingo can make its move next time. I think that would be an excellent place for them to have their baby, mostly because it's so close to the ports. So if we do decide to move their baby to the next island, it would be very, very easy for us to do so. It won't be the same struggle like we're experiencing over here with Jasper. Now Rose Quartz can wave a goodbye to her baby as well. We'll dig up that root and then have her stumble her way into the mud. That must be awfully nostalgic for her. I think it was her father, right? Her father, Honeydew, who always loved to roll around in the mud. So if nothing else, at least this experience is really connecting her to her family. Now, are we going to be able to bring Peach out of these swamplands? That way she'll be nice and safe. I suppose she could even park herself right by the berry bush. She might be a better creature for the job, but we will have to be careful of these bugs over here. I suppose if she scoots all the way to the other side... Oh shoot, if she can... There we go, just barely. We can have her settle down next to our other purse now. Oh, I wonder if Sienna could even teach her a little bit of what she knows. Oh, I wonder if she could help, like, instill confidence in Peach again. She can give her a little bit of healer's training. Things that her mother was never able to do for her. Now, unfortunately, Road Duke has to be careful, too. We can't settle him right next to the bugs, either. The sleeping sickness would probably make it, so we have to leave him behind, because he just wouldn't be able to catch up fast enough. But thankfully, the pathway around the thorns works just as well. Now we can taste some of those delicious poison berries again, which he hasn't had the chance to enjoy in so long. And he'll even get the chance to meet Cadence, too. Now, fingers crossed those bugs are going to go after Foxtrot instead, because I think our day is done. So let's go ahead and let them rest overnight. Oh, jeez, Cadence. Oh, that was a very, very close. We're going to have to have Foxtrot take your place, I think. But not before Roduke scoots on over here to claim some of those toxic berries. Because I think that would probably catch your interest, too. He might not have the poison fangs, but knowing that he can safely collect from the toxic berries must be a very, very big advantage in her eyes. Maybe that alone would be enough to connect their family to Adam again? But it looks like our carnivorous plant has grown back. So what do you say, Isana? How does it look? Oh no! Oh, it's in the red again? Well, that stinks. I guess that means our job isn't quite complete, but it will give Cadence the chance to show her stuff. So as we move Jasper once again as fast as we possibly can, deeper into the swamplands this time, we'll have Cadence move out of the way, so Foxtrot should be able to take her place. Though it seems as if we've come into a little bit of a traffic jam over here, and I think it's because of all of these thick weeds. So maybe we'll have Wolf Song scoop some out, and then she can scoot out of the way. Just make a little bit more room for the queen of her family to actually move around. There we go. If we scoot her on up here, I suppose... Ooh, Tanunu, you can grab this nest for us? Yes, thank goodness. Save it for your mate, okay? She can snatch up her healing fruit, and then we can scoot her down here. And on the next turn, I think she's going to be able to give birth. There we go. So, Cadence... Would you like to settle beside the new happy parents? 
She's playing it cool, but I'm sure this is her way of getting more information out of them. Maybe seeing if she can use some of it to her own advantage to gain back Adam's favor. We'll scoot her on over here so she can pick up that root on the next turn. And then we better have Tanunu start cleaning out this grass. Somebody's probably going to have to take care of that Dodomingo too. Though I am a little bit concerned to go attacking it. Because its shrieking could potentially attract some danger in our direction. Especially if there's a big eared ape anywhere out there. The thing is, on our previous island, I do remember hearing some distinct sounds when the apes were around. And I don't think we've heard any of them spawning in quite some time. So there might actually be nobody on this island at all. There's not even really any grasslands tiles for Baryanas to spawn. I honestly think that our little tribe might be completely alone. Now, I think Peach's plan was to scoot on over here to pick up these berries for us. There we go, much, much better. Those nimble fingers are a huge help. And then Foxtrot, you are gonna scoot on over here to keep those bugs at bay. Hopefully this will just get rid of the swarm entirely. I suppose that Wolf Song might be smelling the extra stinky fruits in the distance too. Now she knows that Isana's very favorite food is the stinky fruit. So maybe she's thinking about calling her out for another adventure. I wonder if it might be a good idea for us to have another baby between Rose Quartz and Shark as well. Just somebody to help them with the food collecting, especially after Shark passes away. He's getting very, very close to the end of his lifespan, so it might be nice for Rose Quartz to have somebody to work with. I think we do have plenty of roots for her to dig about here too. All those roots that were left behind by our flighty birds. So you guys are going to have a feast to take care of very shortly. You could definitely use the extra hand. Now the one problem is, we actually can't crack open these carnivorous plants with these creatures because they don't have any strength whatsoever. That's where a mango was a bit better at the chop than they are because he had the claw to work with. So despite how much Rose Quartz wants to pick up his mission right where he left off, it's not as though she has the skill to collect the same amount of food. Now, is the Dodomingo still lurking around these parts? I actually don't see it. So this might be our chance to make the trade-off. Let's bring Tanunu over here. Oh, there he is. He's making a run for it. Oh, jump in there, Sienna. Thank goodness. He's actually sitting on our ports right now. Like, are you going to take the journey with us, little Dodomingo? Oh my gosh, one of you had the absolutely amazing idea that maybe these permanent nests are actually made by Dodomingos instead. Like, I've always assumed that one of our wandering creatures made these nests and just left them here after their family moved on. But would it not make so much more sense if the Dodomingos were crafting these perfect nests? Maybe that's why they always seem to be hanging around in these parts. Because this is their home and we're just stealing it. Oh, hello. Maybe this is her home too? Oh, you have somebody eyeing up the stinky fruits. The very same ones that Wolf Song was going toward? Okay. Maybe you need to investigate this then, Wolf Song. Make sure this area is safe for Isana. Oh, she stole every last one of them. She's very pretty, though. She actually reminds me of some of the creatures we used to have in our very, very old versions of the tribe. The Summer Shores, perhaps? I think we even had a creature named Summer who looked very much like this. She is interesting, but she doesn't have any unique genes, unfortunately. So I'm not sure if she would be a good one for us to invite to our tribe. We're so low on food as it is. But the only problem is, she is going to be stealing every last bit of food that we have if we're not careful. So I guess that means that Peach better scoop up her berries. We better have Isana do the same. You can grab those. And then we're going to have to find a way to get you around all of these carnivorous plants. I wonder if she's even going to be able to make it over to her friend's side again. I mean, she's going to need the help, Isana. 
you can probably hear her screaming a thief off in the distance. Well, maybe if we're lucky, she'll decide to move on now that all of those stinky fruits are gone. Maybe she even knows where other sources of food are? I suppose Wolfsong could always follow her instead, if she does decide to worm her way back into the darkness. We'll have her clear out the grasses for now, trying as always to make a pathway for her friend to follow. But it might be a long journey if Leiko does disappear. Now Foxtra, if you would be so kind as to guide our poor little Jasper closer to the ports. We'll have her jump this way, so Jasper can get farther away from those bugs. And then Foxtrot can settle down right in the swarm yet again, picking up the grass as she goes. I think Jasper is just about there now. Maybe it'll take two more days, and then everyone should be ready to set sail. Ah, and I just realized? This will be Roduke's very first time interacting with Sienna. Now, we had always assumed that these two probably had a bit of a connection, since they both had the toxic body, and they were both discovered all alone. I believe they were both discovered as kids, too. They were both very, very young at the time, so it seems likely that they may have come from the same family. So, I wonder if Sienna is starting to have second thoughts? I feel like she was very eager to go exploring with Tanunu on this new island. But knowing that her family might actually be out here somewhere, that she still could have the chance to reunite with them, now I'm starting to think it would be very hard for her to leave that all behind. We'll let her think about it overnight, but Tanunu is starting to get the sense that her mind might be changing. He's going to be heartbroken once he finds out. I'm sure he had grand ideas in his mind, too. That they would have a huge family on these swampy islands. They'd have more poison berries than they would even know what to do with. But you know, at least they're going to have one little baby for him to take instead. And oh my goodness, how adorable does she look? She has those poison fangs, too, which is perfect. So, she's going to be able to help her father out very, very nicely. She has the nimble fingers, she has the stinky tail, she even has the lean body. Oh my goodness, maybe it's going to be harder for you to keep track of her than we thought. And immunity gene J and the home island gene. Oh, she is like everything that we could have hoped for. Every little rarity all wrapped up into one. Her name is Rara and I'm sure she'll make a wonderful Swamp Queen. She doesn't have the stripes, but I guess we do have to consider that this side of Adam's family is all about new things, progression in new and different ways. So maybe Tanunu wouldn't see that so much as a burden, as just a new page in their journey. Of course, Cadence wouldn't see it that way. They're actually thinking about giving those bluebird feathers to somebody without Adam's stripes? How could you possibly go against Adam's wishes like that? What? Oh my gosh, we have a Baryena visitor? Can they spawn in swamp tiles? Oh, that is news to me. Okay, Wolf Song. Okay, things just got much more interesting. I'm actually not sure if we can take this Baryena down. If we'll have enough time to do so. I mean, we need Cadence to stay over here for this plan, so that our creatures don't end up getting hurt. Oh, this is very, very nerve-wracking. I mean, poor little Foxtrot. She only has a strength of three because of her lean body. But I guess she could do a little bit of damage. I'm almost wondering if it would be a better idea to have us lead the Sparagina away, assuming that Wolf Song could get his attention. We just don't want him getting to our babies, you know? And certainly not our oldest tribe mates either. Though I guess this might be a good time for Sienna to work her healing magic. I mean, if there was ever a time for her to purr, it would definitely be now. So with Peach watching on from afar, we'll have her scoot on over here and purr for her entire family. Oh, was somebody stealing our food? Yes, it's you again. Oh, even in the middle of a Baryena attack, she is still stealing our food. I think we're just going to have to leave her to it and pick up the food that we can actually reach. 
all of our berries over here with Peach. Thankfully, it only takes two swipes. So she can still scoot to the rest of her tribe to make sure that she's not in the way. Maybe we should have Jasper come around the corner first, since he's so much slower. And in fact, I wonder if it's going to be clumsy, tired Jasper who stumbles into the carnivorous plant next. Maybe it's Jasper that Cadence will be able to save, since it doesn't seem too interested in munching on our Dodomingo. I am so torn. Do we have Isana go out and try to help her friend? Can she even make it through all of these weeds? I guess she would have to pick up this one first. Oh no, there's one blocking her right here. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see that. If we have Peach pick it up instead, then she should be able to break free. All right, so she actually might be able to make it over to Wolfsong, just so she has somebody to attack the bear Yino with. And maybe then we could bring Tanunu around the bend to pick up these stinky fruits instead. That would probably be a good thing for him to fill his pockets with. He's very, very used to those stinky fruit juices. And since they won't be seeing it on the new island as often, it might be a good thing for him to take just for his baby to enjoy. Oh, really, Mr. Donamingo? You're gonna sit there now? There's not even a nest there and he's blocking us again. I mean, we could swipe at the Dodomingo, but I'm afraid that that's just going to attract the Baryina's attention. So I think instead we're going to have to wait for him to move. Let's go back here and have Shark pick up all of those stinky fruits. I think we might actually have to abandon our hopes of having another baby between them. There's just way, way too much food here for us to let it go to waste. Yeah, we'll go ahead and start carving up the roots from the ground. And now we can have Tanunu make his safe passage closer to the stinky roots. Even now, he seems to be getting in the way. Honestly, it would be so nice if the carnivorous plants would just go after the Dodomingos instead. I mean, look at this. I know it's only we're at the one point of meat, but it would still tie you over for the time. Now, should we have Wolfsong try to hit the Baryina? She is a little bit older than Isana is, but I also feel like, you know, she is a little bit stronger too. She does have those ram horns on her side. So if she lunges this way, she'll be out of the tall grass, just revealed enough for Isana to notice her. And then she should be able to sneak around the outskirts, hopefully lighting up a good pathway for Wolfsong to make her escape. Yeah, if we scoot her over here now, maybe we can make the Baryina give chase. I wonder if the Baryina would even see Foxtrot as a threat, since she has Baryina genes herself. I mean, she does actually look like a little Baryina, with that brown fur of hers. And then, of course, the fact that she has a stinky tail on her side. Yeah, I wonder if the Baryina would just bypass her. Now, unfortunately, she isn't strong enough to tear down these berry bushes either. In fact, I don't think a single one of our creatures will be able to do that. Cadence, maybe, but she has different missions in mind. So as we start leading our creatures over to these ports, we'll get her ready to take care of the carnivorous plant on the next turn. I think that should be about the end of this turn, though. We'll have Foxtrot scoot this way. That way, she'll be in between the baby and the Baryina, so he won't have an opening. Unfortunately, there's nothing else for her to pick up around here, so she'll just spend the day maybe playing with the baby. Oh, I bet she would have fun with that. She can tell little Rara about all of her adventures. Oh, and you actually went straight for Peach? Oh my goodness, the poor thing. Oh, Wolfsong, your plans have failed. Well, we do have one more day to spend, so maybe it would be a good idea for us to just go to town on the Sparagina. Maybe with all of our strength combined, with Foxtrot using her giant Baryina claw, with Peach over here hitting him too. Yes, we can get our revenge, and we can pick up all of that nice Baryina meat to take with us to the next island. So I guess it wasn't all such a waste after all. We have stinky fruits in our pockets. We have plenty of roots. 
think there might just be one more back here for you to pick up before we leave. Maybe that was a sneaky little gift from Animeme herself. You guys know how she loves to challenge us right before our tribe moves on. So something tells me she may have had a bit of a role to play. But Sienna is on her last day, so I guess it was never meant to be anyways. She was never going to get the chance to go with her mate to the Swamp Islands. She's going to have to part ways now with both Tanunu and her baby. Maybe she'll say that she is going to go out looking for her family just as she planned, but in her heart she knows that she won't get very far. She'll only scoot over here to purr for Peach, this poor sad creature who so desperately needs healing. And maybe this sacrifice will finally be enough to pull Peach out of her funk, to wake her up as the healer that she was always meant to be. So I know I thought that we would be leaving in this episode, but I think in order to have enough time to explore it fully, we're going to wait until the next episode instead, so Cadence will have the time to save poor clumsy Jasper when he inevitably slips into the carnivorous plant's jaws. And so Tanuna will have time to guide his baby over to the ports too. Little Rara is going to make an excellent addition to the swamps, and it'll give Cadence a lot of time to think about where she should guide her family next. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!